Well, and I know that you like to talk about, you know, when people get up on stage, they get nervous and all sorts of physiological things start yeah. to happen. And, and people kind of use that, I think, as a reason that they're afraid of public speaking. But yeah. I know you know some of the science behind this. And so can you share with us a little bit about what's going on when you're standing up there in front of the crowd and, and kind of help us, <laughs> help us master that a little bit? Absolutely. Well, this is the fascinating thing because chances are the folks watching are some of the vast majority of Americans who are themselves scared of public speaking. Sure. Understandably so. So you may be watching this thinking, well, yeah, that's a nice idea, but I don't want to be that person. I want somebody else to be the give me the ball person. Mm -hmm. Well, it, I want to just transmit this one idea that may change your mind, and that is understanding the physiology behind that fear of speaking. Because mo for most people, when you even think about speaking, right, what happens? Your palms get sweaty, yeah. <laughs> your heartbeats start pounding in your sure. chest, right? Your stomach gets uh, the butterflies and all the rest. And you start to wonder, where does that come from? Well, I'll tell you a quick story that I think illustrates why that happens and why those symptoms all get set off in you right at the moment when you don't want to deal with them. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to introduce you to a character named Caveman Dave. Caveman Dave is a caveman who lived way back in the caveman era, a few hundred thousand years ago. And one day, Caveman Dave was out foraging for food. He's hunting, he's gathering, he's doing his Caveman Dave thing, he's all happy, right? Yep. And he enters a clearing, he's by himself, and he looks across the clearing and about 200 yards away on the other side of that clearing, he sees a big bear. And the bear is staring right at him. Now, in that situation, there are three specific conditions that exist for Caveman Dave. First, he's separated from the group. The rest of his tribe is back off at the camp, hanging out together. He's here by himself, no chance of getting help. Second, he is the object of focus in this situation. In other words, the bear is staring straight at him, whereas if he were hiding up a tree or behind a rock, he may not be as nervous. And third is what we call fear of harm. Dave knows that this is a situation that could do significant damage to him <laughs> sure. or maybe even kill him right. if he doesn't handle it quickly and correctly. Now, when those three conditions exist, when the human brain perceives those three conditions, it automatically unleashes instantaneously this incredible chemical reaction that goes all the way through the body that transforms the body basically so that it's better able to escape that situation alive mm. to prepare you to do one of two things. Either gonna, you're going to fight your way out or you're going to run away. Okay. So your body prepares you to do one of those two things, whichever mm. works best. Okay. That reaction, as we all probably know from high school, is called the fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. right? and that's, the, that's the condition that's going to save your life in that situation. So Caveman Dave has the fight or flight response um, turn on in him. As a result, he's actually able to run away. He outruns the bear, he hides behind a rock, he gets away. And as a result of surviving that encounter, he's able to go back to his tribe. He's more likely to procreate. He passes the fight or flight response onto his kids because they have it. They're more likely to survive as they grow up, more likely to procreate. They pass it on and so on. Now jump eons forward to modern day. Yep. Think about a public speaking situation. Let's say that you are giving a presentation in an auditorium in front of a thousand of your industry peers at a conference. I can right? tell people are already getting nervous. Exactly. I'm getting nervous <laughs> just talking about it, right? So think about the conditions that exist in that scenario. Mm -hmm. First of all, you're separated from the group. Everybody else is sitting mm -hmm. and you're standing on stage. You're in the spotlight, they're in the dark. Second, you're the object of focus. Everybody in the room, everybody watching, all your peers, all the people who could potentially hire you, the crew, the person who, you know, the event manager, everybody's staring at you. So you are the object of focus. Mm -hmm. And third is the fear of harm. Now, you may not literally worry that you will die from your presentation. And as far as I know, there's never been an instance <laughs> of one recorded death due to speaking. Right. But... You also know that if you don't do well, you may embarrass yourself, you may bring shame upon yourself or your company, uh, you may, as a result, be fired, which mm. threatens your income, which right. threatens your ability to feed your family, and so on. So there is some legitimate potential harm that could happen if you don't do well. Well, there are those three conditions again. <laughs> Separated from the group, object of focus, fear of harm. And when those three conditions are present, once again, your body, body automatically engages that fight or flight response. Your brain doesn't know the difference between a potential bear attack or maybe you're about to get hit by a bus or speaking in public. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's all the same. If those three conditions exist and your brain perceives that they exist, well, then the fight or flight response will be engaged. So, so, so now that we've had yes. this fight or flight, so we know that we have the fight or flight response. And is, is there, I know we're going to talk about tips in a minute, but mm -hmm. is there a way, is there a way of getting rid of the fight or flight response? Or what, what do you kind of recommend for people with the fight or flight response, knowing now that 
that is what it is. That's a great question. And I know it's very tempting for people to want to get rid of the fight or flight response because here it is taking over your body and causing all these symptoms that are detrimental to you doing what you're afraid to do anyway, which mm -hmm. is give the presentation. All you want to do is just throw it away. Well, unfortunately, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. It's a biological response. It's built into you. And when you think about it, it's actually a pretty good thing because there may be a moment when the fight or flight response will save your life. You may actually be about to be hit by a bus and the fight or flight response will get you to jump out of the way quickly gotcha. and save your life. So you don't want to get rid of it. Mm. And I also believe that some amount of anxiety is healthy and positive for a presentation. Anxiety is what moves you to action. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is what makes you say three days before the presentation, I got to get ready for this mm. thing. I'll write an outline. I'll get my slides together. I'll talk to people. It, it motivates you. So the question is, okay, if I can't get rid of it, and if it is in some way good, how do I harness it? How do I knock okay. it down to a size where it's manageable and it's not taking me over so that I can get it to work for me instead of working against me? Okay. 